All right, today we're going to look at raw noise profiles and which filtering approach may produce the best results. Okay, so a little while ago, Joshua Bardwell released a video about the two filtering approaches for Betaflight 3.3. One was my approach, where it's a mixture of using the dynamic notch and the stage 2 filter for 32K gyros and PID loops. Another is not using that dynamic notch at all and just using the two stage filter. So I want to go into noise profiles and show a little bit of data on what I've seen works best and, and why I have uh, my approach and you know why do I, what got me there. So anyways, uh, we started back with this in a video, which I can link to the upper right hand corner. We looked at the digital low pass filter settings in a gyro and reviewed how that digital low pass filter moves around and why this two stage approach is appropriate. Uh, just for a reminder slide, you know, it was this video that had these slides in it. So do check that out. It's, I, I think it's a good video. Um, one thing I did want to clarify on that is there's a common misconception that I even got tied into and I want to thank one of my commenters, commentors, anyways, for correcting me and clarifying me. I did then follow up with one of the prominent noise people in our hobby. He was even, um, I think, a little messed up by this as well for years. What we should, talked about is that at the cutoff frequency that, and if you look at that old presentation, that a low pass filter cuts half the noise. That's actually not true. It cuts half the power. It cuts 0.71 the amplitude of the noise at the cutoff frequency and at 6 decibels it's 0.5. So it's really looking at this chart from Wiki. At the cutoff frequency for any low pass filter it's 0.5 the power ratio and it's 0.71 708 the amplitude ratio. So just keep that in mind when you're setting your cutoff on your low pass filters and, and this is where I always came into it with even with thinking it was half that you want to set your cutoff of your low pass filter in a little you know if you have a peak right here in noise I would always set the cutoff a little bit ahead of it so that especially now so that you know you're only getting 0.71 cut of the amplitude of the noise. So if you're looking on a, a black box log here, you know, this is the amplitude. So if you're setting your cutoff right on top of it, you know, if all the math works out appropriately as it should, then you're only reducing this by 0.71. You're not reducing this by half. So, so on and so forth. So you got to keep that in mind. Okay, so back to these two approaches. We looked at the 32K uh, and the different options and the associated latency with in 32K with Approach 1 and Approach 2, and you can see that Approach 1 at the start, uh, where you'd have no dynamic notch turned on, you'd just have a, you know, you'd have your Stage 1 low pass filter and your Stage 2 kind of set at the initial state, the 150 hertz, and then you would move that up, keep moving that up to 250 hertz, that you can see the latency on the gyro. This is from 0 to 20 hertz, and this is from 20 to 100 hertz you can see the associated latency there and then latency with the so between the all three of these honestly they're they're pretty close you can see these two are one you know they're very close so the two different approaches here in their optimal state are about the same in their initial state approach two is a little bit better than approach one in latency same thing on 8k approach one and two in the start condition about the same. Again, approach two is a little bit less latency in the start, and in the optimal condition, approach two has a little bit less latency there as well. So we're getting a little bit of edge on latency, and I, I think that's just one part of it. The other major part that I reviewed in a video when we talked about the dynamic notch is how much cut the dynamic notch has. You know, when we're looking at a low pass filter, and, and I'm going to skip around here just a little bit, you know, you're getting around negative two or three decibel attenuation at the cutoff. It goes, you know, slopes out to six that double the frequency. 
So from 100 to 200, uh, I'm sorry, you're down around 9, 9, negative 9 decibels of attenuation, 3 plus 6. So you're, you know, it's a decent amount of attenuation, but when you're looking at a notch filter, you know, you're looking negative 30 to 40 decibels of attenuation. So that's a heck of a lot more attenuation. And what that results in, just doing some tests, I did a couple flights, and you can see it's a, it's a full flight, two, point, you know, 2 minutes and 43 seconds. This was the approach one. This is the raw noise on the pitch axis, which is the, the, and this quad, I didn't change anything in between. All I did is change the filter setups. So this was approach one. So there was no dynamic notch on, and it just had the two-stage low-pass filter. And I'll make these logs available in a link in the video description so you can download them and look at them yourself, you know, see what the different settings are. And then this was a log with approach two. Now, the two graphs you're seeing, I just wanted to show essentially the raw noise. So this is looking at the debug mode equals notch. So this is the raw scaled gyro noise of the flight. So you can see approach one was a little less actually than approach two. Approach two had a little bit more noise in it than approach one. It's probably just the flight. You can see uh, the flights here. I did have to clip this one down because this was a little bit longer of a flight. So it's about, you know, so it's the same duration and time. So let's go to the filter results. So now we're on the pitch axis looking at the gyro noise and you can see that you still have uh, that peak motor spike. And let's now look at approach two. Boom. And that's what I expect. You know, the dynamic notch is a notch filter, which has negative 30, you know, 40 to 30 decibels of attenuation. It can move around on each axis, so it's moving around the pitch, it's tracking peak motor noise and attacking that wherever that may be. It's doing that on roll independently. It's tracking that noise wherever it is on the roll axis, and the same thing for the yaw. So you got, you know, the dynamic notch is not one filter, it's actually three independent for each axis and it's going around tr tracking that noise and, and crushing it whereas the approach one where the two-stage filtering it's not doing that it just set where it's set and that's all you get it's the same thing for all three axes no matter what that's why I came to that conclusion I, th I thought approach two was a pretty good approach there is uh, logs that would be I think really good candidates for approach one and it does seem like a two-stage low-pass filter, if you have a low enough inherent noise level, a base noise level, unfiltered noise level of your quad, that it can produce a very uh, smooth filtered data. I don't know how to explain it more than it just seems like the output smoother. It's apparent in the, in the logs, this is no magic box that you can't see, see behind, so you can just look at your logs and see if you can notice the difference. But anyways, in this trace, if I'm looking at the roll axis, the raw data on the roll, and I'm looking at the pitch, and I'm looking at the yaw, you can see I really don't have any motor spikes uh, in here at all. Now this person has it, his flight contr controller soft mounted, and those soft mounts are doing a heck of a job. He has a pretty smooth machine here. Now one thing before, even in this log, I would say before you would take this and go to approach one, is that the logging rate really needs to be more. One kilohertz logging rate is not high enough to, so you can see it's a one kilohertz logging rate because on the spectrum analysis you only get 500 hertz. The spectrum analysis only ever gives you half of whatever your logging rate is. I like to log at 4 kilohertz. I would love to log at 8, but it seems like an SD card gets a little twitchy when it comes to that. Sometimes it doesn't record the logs. So for the difference between 4 and 8, I really don't see too much difference there on an 8K board. For a 32 or 16K uh, gyro and PID loop, whichever is the least of those, it would usually be the PID loop, I would try to log at 8. I just think, or 16, you know, if you can log at your PID loop rate, that's the best thing you can do, but you'd have to have an SD card because it would be a pretty big file. And it's gonna be tough to find an SD card that can accept data fast enough to successfully record at a 16K, but I'm sure people are doing it out there. So anyways, record as fast as you can for noise analysis, and you can bring that down for PID analysis and looking at other things. 
So before this person would do it, I would say, you know, definitely implement a faster logging rate, then look, make sure there's no peaks, and then yeah, this would be, this quad would be an excellent candidate for approach one. Again, there is the argument about, hey, if you ding a prop, or if you're using turtle mode, or you clip a gate, or any of that stuff, that hey, you, you know, you're not going to have that high attenuation safety that you'd have out of the dynamic notch. So that's a consideration. I usually don't use turtle mode and flip it over because of that those kind of reasons but hey, if you are or you're in a race or whatever um, that, that dynamic nonce is probably a good safety factor there was interestingly enough some conversation on the slack about could we make the on off option of the dynamic notch variable so that if noise would be over a certain threshold the dynamic notch would enable itself and then start attacking the noise. I thought that was a very interesting and would be a good pull request. So if you're a developer, get on that. So this was good candidate for approach one. Uh, this is my quad and I have everything soft mounted. Uh, the motor soft mounted, the flight control. I still get peaks. Uh, I'm using RCX motors because uh, they're budget and I'm cheap. And the uh, they're a little noisy but they have great punch. So anyways, they still have some big peaks here. This would not work well in approach one. You can see my peak on the pitch is pretty darn high. And this is what's not moving the slider at all on either one of those. And on the roll, I kind of have like a two peak scenario here building. This peak's not really getting attenuated because it's, you know, 500 hertz is right here. And that's as high as the dynamic notch can go. So I just threw a stat a static notch right on top of it here. Um, and I don't believe I have the stage two filter turned on for this one. I don't think so, no. So the stage two filter is turned off on this one. Okay, well, that's it. I just wanted to kind of revisit the two approaches, put out there why I still think approach two is a good approach. But hey, if you have a low inherent noise quad by looking at your notch traces, I think approach one would be a good, uh, or maybe even the better. Test it yourself. From my test, I think Approach 1 would be better if you have a low noise profile and you're not worried about nicking props. I don't have that situation ever happen to me, apparently. So that's where I'm at with Approach 2, and I think it's a little bit more rugged and durable. It would be nice to have, or it could be uh, baked into maybe Betaflight 3.5, a dynamic notch that enabled itself if the noise magnitude got above a certain threshold. That would be awesome. Again, thanks. I hope this helps.